So I'm going to show you how to work out standard deviation in the most simplest way possible. Um, I'm writing out the formula because I know for some exams, depending what subject it might be, you have to learn the formula itself. Um, I personally don't like using the formula, even though it seems like just plugging numbers into this, but the fact you have to learn it anyway isn't really helpful. So I'm going to show you a simpler way of doing it without the formula, even though it's the same-ish procedure. So we don't need that. So you're going to get a set of numbers, no doubt. There might be more or less than this, higher or lower values, but what you need to do is add up the amount of numbers you have. Now this is crucial to the first step and the last few steps. So you've got six numbers and what you need to do is add them all together. So your total is 600 and what you're going to do then is divide 600 by 6 and this is the mean. Now I'm sure a lot of you know how to do the mean if you're working out standard deviation so you just divide the number of the numbers that there are by the total of those numbers. I had to really think about this even though it's so simple but our answer is 100. Now the mean is a really crucial number so you need to make sure you've got this one right in order to have the right result at the end. So with our mean 100 we're going to subtract and what I mean by that is subtract 100 from each of your numbers that we had at the beginning rather than the other way around. So you're going to get minuses and positives. So all these numbers up here, so 75 minus 100, 83 minus 100, that's what you're going to do. Like I said, you're going to have minuses and positives and you might even have zeros, but don't ignore them, include them. Your number amount doesn't go down. Um, and what you're going to do now is square your new numbers. This is another really important step. I've skipped it because it's very boring, but once you have a calculator, you're fine, and they will all be positive numbers because if you square a negative number, you come out with a positive. So now you're gonna to need to get the total of all of your squared numbers, which in this case is 1996, and you're on to pretty much the last steps now. So. If we go back to this six that we had at the beginning, remember, just because we had a zero, it doesn't mean that there's now five numbers. What we need to do is divide it by six, and that's essentially, again, working out the mean for a second time with a new number. So this is our mean, 332.66 whatever, and that's the variance. So if you're asked to work out the variance, it's actually a step of standard deviation. So, if we go all the way back to the beginning with the formula, you can see how it all comes together. So you had the sum of, because you were working out each one individually with the formula, x minus the mean squared over n minus 1. And that's your variance. And then the bit missing is being able to square root these numbers or the sum of these numbers. So that's literally all you have to do with your variance to get a standard deviation. So if you already get given the variance, then it's a bonus because all you need to do is find the square root, but these are all the steps you need from the beginning. So the square root of 332.6 in this case is 18.2, and that's your standard deviation.